Welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. I'm Mal Lee, your host for this evening. And as they say, like they say, every other evening. Well, at the moment, anyway. But, hey-ho, Grassroots Football is back. Yes, it was back last night. I was out and about. Absolutely Baltic. And again today, freezing cold, raining. Raining last night. It was only spitting a little bit today, but the sun did shine a little bit. Just a little bit. But it was still freezing cold. But what do we expect? It is winter. We start morning, don't we? And nine times out of ten when football starts, okay, it is late in the season. This is starting. It's on and off, on and off, on and off due to COVID-19. But luckily, Lancashire has suspended all the grassroots football fixtures till around about January, February, or the end of January anyway. So that is because no one is social distancing. No one is respecting the rules the regulations towards sanitising, social distancing. If the FA starts seeing that and the council starts seeing it, well, unfortunately, ours is going to be suspended. We are in Tier 2, but we've still got to take safety precautions. We've waited a long time to get grassroots football back. We're back, so please respect the rules, the regulations of the hubs as well. I don't think there's any grass football at the moment, or parents allowed, should I say, at grassroots football. And it's still one parent per child. You can, you're allowed to go into the hubs so long as you've got your QR code, so long as you've got your face mask. You can go in and you can get a cup of tea. A fly, it's freezing cold. What's the little fly doing here? Don't be going there, I know what you're thinking. Anyway, it was brilliant to be back, especially last night. Now... It was dark, cold, windy, freezing cold. I have to respect the referees and the managers and the coaches and the parents who were all out and about and the kids who were fantastic because they've all got smiles on their faces. And today was exactly the same. I was talking away to one of the parents, one of the dads of one of the young referees who was saying it's brilliant to be back. I'm out and about watching the referee and it's great to see the kids smile and there was some lovely football, cup matches as well. A... What more could you ask for? Hey, what more could you ask for? It was brilliant. It was well organised. But as I say, it was cold. Referees, I think, were only short of one, if any. We thought there'd be a lot more shortage. I did put a poll on Twitter and Facebook. Fill it in. It's only a yes or no. I'm sure you can put yes or no. If you think, maybe a lot of you are waiting till after the weekend. We put up on Twitter till Monday. If you think that your league or whatever you are are short of referees, we need to ask the question, why are we short of referees? Because it's coming towards Christmas, I thought we'd be inundated with referees coming back to get a few bob in their pocket so they can go and do extra shopping for Christmas. That's what they're all out for. They've all waited and I don't blame them anyway. Without the referee, there is no game. We all know that and unfortunately, managers have to take over the reins. They have to referee and take over it and they have to be impartial as well. But well done to the referees last night, well done to the referees today. As I say, it was bitterly cold, they have to stand around waiting for their next games and they managed to do it as well. Okay, how many times, if you're probably all sitting there, or the majority going, they get paid for it. It's not about being paid for it, it's about them taking part and keeping the kids and the laws of the game flowing, isn't it? The team games, it's great. And I know there's a lot of disagreements towards the referees out there. Um, well, especially on a football pitch, there's always disagreements. But so long as it's not too heavy-handed, so long, so long as the referees don't report it and you can just get on with it, and it was like water off a duck's back, basically, because it was a bit petty. You can all challenge referee. We see that on the touchlines day in, day out. I hear it as well. And, um, yeah, so long as all the referees are still enjoying themselves over there, don't forget the young referees, safeguarding incidents, that's what it's all about. And I did approach one of the coaches today who I, I, well, I thought was a coach, who I thought was a little bit far too extreme towards the children. So um, I've noticed the clubs, uh, one of the clubs who the coach was in charge of, whether they want to take action, it's entirely up to them. But um, it's not very nice when some coaches out there are really shouting at the kids. Respect the kids, respect the referee, respect the referee if you don't mind, and enjoy it. And I've got to thank each and every one of you today because I was approached by many, many people about regarding my run um, and asking how the running's going. They all take interest and I put a post up on their social media, you may have seen that. 
uh, since I've decided to do a 26.2 mile run, which is a marathon, where's all my friends gone? On Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites, they've all disappeared. I know why, just in case I ask you to do the run. Keep in the back seat, that's what it's about. But you can actually support me in another way. You don't have to do the run, but you can go on our GoFundMe page and throw a little pound in if you don't mind, because every penny helps and we need to raise £25,000 for this run. Looking forward to it. If you can, then please, please just donate. You don't have to do the run. I'm not going to force you to do the run. But if there's any bike riders out there who can help us out, because we've only got one at the moment, and what we're going to do is have about 10 runners for this. And these 10 runners are going to be starting at 8 o'clock in the morning on February the 7th at 8 a.m. Now, we put a post on there yesterday. we we'll say a post on the YouTube channel. And we've had loads of feedback on it. Thank you very much to Donna, mum of Emily, um, who was outspoken and told us, basically what's gone on throughout her life and why we need to raise the funding for Emily. She's got two daughters, cerebral palsy. Um, Emily is the last, latest one who needs the operation, but unfortunately, mum was struck down by cervical cancer. If you watched the YouTube video last night, please, please donate. And it was a heartwarming story, and even I got emotional throughout that story as well. And we talked openly and honestly after that as well. So it went on for a good few hours, making mum a cup of tea, and we enjoyed our little chat. And um, there was loads of feedback regarding what, you know, there's a million things that these families go through that you do need to help. And it really, I was proud to, to say yes to, to Olivia to help, Olivia to help out when it came to helping out in more my family because there's a lot of stress carries on throughout the family. You wouldn't think so the way Olivia referees, she's absolutely top class. You wouldn't think she had problems like that, trying to help and fundraise for Emily. She's brilliant, puts a smile on her face each and every time, and the referee is second to none. I think all you managers and coaches out there who give me feedback as well today, regarding and last night, regarding the way Olivia refs. And I know there's more referees out there who are absolutely magical. It's not just about Olivia, we know that, but Olivia was absolutely fantastic. and really getting stuck in today, even through the weather. And she was running 10 times as fast, and I think that's because it was Baltic, as I say. I wish I was running, but I'm running tonight. I'm running this evening. Fingers crossed, my back's okay. Two days, touch wood, touch wood. It's okay, and I'll be able to run after this one. I'm in training, as you know yourself. I'm trying to do up to, or build up to 30, 35 miles per week if I can. We've only got eight weeks left to do it. Other runners are running with me. Tony Mallon, thank you very much indeed. You put up prizes. Massive thanks to Donna for taking part. I don't think Donna looked back on that video last night because you can't watch yourself uh, just like a daughter, Olivia. Can't watch yourself, hate watching yourselves. But do you know what? You've done yourselves and your family proud. And hat off to you, Donna. Well done. Um, and as I say, the feedback was immense. And so much so that one of our runners even commented on there. It's inspired him more, Tony M Mullen, Mallon. Sorry, Tony, Tony Mallon, um, who's also brought in to me last night at the football some uh, great prizes to put towards the raffle, which will be starting as soon as we collect all the gear in because COVID-19 strikes, isn't it? And all the deliveries are all delayed for some reason. And that's what's happened. Just got to wait before we do any sort of raffle. And that's going to realise, uh, really bring us in some extra pounds towards Emily's operation. The more, the better. And it's short but sweet, but it's coming in slowly but surely. So thank you very much to everyone who's getting involved, and especially the run. And I'll just have a little drop of this tea again. And it's um, Earl Grey to Annings, and it's just breakfast tea. It's not Lazy... Um, I forgot my name. <laughs> lazy Grey, it's not that. No, it's not that. Um, and Tony tells me Lazy Grey helps you lose weight. I was first on me as well. I thought it was green tea and green tea was good for you. But all these flavoured teas, I'm into all them. I've cut right down on dairy. Well, I'm basically off dairy. The only thing I'll have is the milk. I may have a bit of cheese once a week, but the milk is on porridge every single day without sugar. People say, oh, can you eat porridge without sugar? Well, you do, and I've done it for six years now. And it's great. Living on porridge, it's, it, it really gets you healthy, keeps you fit. Not more so, though. No more so than... The running 
and I've lost from 12.30 and I'm down to 11 and three quarter pound. I think I'm doing rather well on that one. I don't, I'm not too sure how much more weight I can lose, but the running helps you. In this cold weather, it was Baltic the other night when I was running. I think that was on Friday night, Thursday night. It was cold, it was rainy, it was wet, and it, it took me a little while to warm up. But once it warmed up, teammate, it really does burn you out. I'll tell you that now. And I'm on these revies. You may have seen them, little strips that you put onto your tongue. They dissolve, you don't need water with them. And it's like a food supplement. And I wasn't too sure, I've taken two now. And on my first run the other night, the first half of it, I've said to myself, you're not gonna go on here, you can't carry on. This is, please stop and walk, and then carry on running. And for some reason, I was telling myself to carry on, carry on. I was thinking of Emily and her mum as well, what they've been through, and it spares you on, it gives you that incentive to go on. And then the second half of the run, which is a 6.2 mile run, it was great. It made me feel really, really well within myself. The breathing started easing, the run, the step, the change, the everything about it in the run, and even the heat. It was great. It carried me on, it spared me on. So I'm going to try one of these revies again, and I'll let you know tomorrow whether it really worked. And hopefully my back, if my back is okay, I can extend my run. That's the reason I'm not extending my run at the moment, because when you get home, it's, it's the back eight that really is sore and the following day could be perfectly well but I've got my physio, Paul coming to me on Thursday, uh, Thursday afternoon, going to give me a good workout and he did tell me, he said please make sure it's not on a day of your run so I've got to change the days to make sure that I'm open free on Thursday but probably what he didn't tell me is if it's on the day of your run you will not be able to run because I'm going to give you such a workout that you're going to be in a little bit of pain, that's what I think this physio is trying to tell me but in a nice way anyway looking forward to that and even more so if my back's okay tomorrow i'm looking forward to that so uh, fingers crossed i'll be okay after the run and i'll see if i can get up to maybe seven seven and a half mile tonight if not it'll be six six point two because you know you do have that feeling whether you can go on that little bit more and i've got me me map i've got my plan mapped out and then we're going to do everton um, valley next week because they're up the hills, they're tough. We're going to be sprinting up them, walking down them, sprinting up them, getting the legs motivated, getting the legs ready for this big marathon run on February the 7th. But in the meantime, we've got loads of grassroots football, fingers crossed. We're going to be back out again, out and about. Again, we'll start doing interviews very soon, but obviously we're letting everyone settle in. And thank you very much to Geoffrey Humble as well. Barry, you're going to let us do a bucket collection for Emily. Over the next few weeks, it's going to be a cracker. We're made up with that one. Thank you very much indeed for letting us do that. We thought everyone could settle in this weekend. And we'll start doing that. We'll have someone else helping us out. And uh, it's all about us running, trying to raise as much as we can. I'd love, I really, really would love if we could get that cheque, £25,000 for Emily's family on the end of that run. That would be immense. It'd be fantastic. It'd be a dream come true. And I've got to finish the run as well. That'd be a dream come true as well. And we'd be singing and dancing because we have a lad called Jamie Wooding who'll be there meeting us at the end of it, going to be singing for us. We've got all kinds coming on. Chris O'Sullivan from One Call Taxis, he's brilliant. In the background, working very, very hard. Managers were approaching me saying they're going to be doing something. Don't worry, we'll get behind you on the run. We've got a few weeks left yet. Grassroots football is back, so you'll notice a difference. Pablo Rutherford, another one who's picked me up and said to me, you know, we're going to help out, don't worry, Mal. Um, there's going to be a lot of rallies around there in grassroots football as well. And as we all know, Olivier is a top referee, grassroots football referee there. Knows a lot of managers were made up with that. And with it being Emily being Olivia's sister, obviously, I'm sure you're all going to chip in and, and help us out as well immensely. And we're also looking, while you're all on here, we're looking for vulnerable children and um, when we say vulnerable children we're asking the parents if, if your child is vulnerable subject to not being healthy you know mental health issues and, and wanting to get involved in something else and thinking they haven't got a voice thinking no one can help them out there they're running out of time 10 years of age to up to 14 years of age we're looking for a group of 26 to take part in a young commentators course the reason we're saying 
young commentators because we're building you up from this course, from editing, from podcasting, from interviewing, for confidence building, getting you on the workshops as well that Wayne is building for us. Do you know what? There's a lot going on. It's going to be a fun packed course for you to go on. So we're asking you to get on this course, not help us out. We want to help you out and give you a voice, something that you can do with us going out and interview mums and dads on the touchlines, fellow playmates on there as well, your teammates. You can interview them, you can interview committee members and we're not promising that we'll have ex or professional footballers in the future. We're just saying they may be available. So watch this space, we're not promising you. We just want to get each and every one of you something to do. So mums and dads, if you think that your child can qualify for this post, we're getting names in already for the next course, then please, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us on welcoming all, because that's what we want to do. So we're going to be holding the courses here and maybe in Nosley as well, combined two studios. So we'll let you know, watch this space, keep in touch with us, and I might have some more news tomorrow because I've got a nice meeting tomorrow as well regarding this course. So I'll give you more information if you don't mind tomorrow on that. But as I say, we've got loads and loads of things to talk about, things to do as well. And we do know around about uh, March that the referees courses will be starting up again. Is there a shortage of referees? You've seen our post on there, survey on there, yes or no, please answer it, as we said earlier on. And it's on Facebook as well. I'm sure there's many of you can say yes or no to a shortage of referees. But uh, the Liverpool JFL League today, that was OK. Not a problem there. They got all the games on. It was great to see. It was great to see the referees' smiles on their faces, cold. And just getting on with things and the kids playing the football, that was great. And there was cup games as well, so well done to the committee there, giving their cups out. I'm not too sure if that was the finish of last season on the cups with the lockdown, so uh, maybe it was. But uh, well done to all you teams, well done to the, the, the winners and also commiserations to the runners-up of that cup. But everyone still had smiling faces on there. It was supposed to be nice to come back to a cup final, mostly on the first day of lockdown for you. But the... First two days have been excellent, well done to everyone, and no bad reports back from all these staff. In Jeffrey Humble, it's been great, so let's know what you, whatever you were, what it was like there, the social distancing, the mask wearing, the nice hot cups of tea to keep you warm as well, maletontextaline.com, or if you've got any other information about poor touchline behaviour, we'd love to hear from you. Again, maletontextaline.com, give us some feedback, add me as a friend on Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites, please. And you can also text me as well. I'm available on that 24-7 and I'll come right back to you as well. Join us up, follow us on Twitter. And it's Premier League again, so let's hope whatever you are, your Premier League team is up and running and enjoying it. Because fans are due back, I think, tomorrow. Liverpool versus Wolves, quarter past seven kickoff on Amazon Prime. I'll be watching it, no doubt, but um, I'm not too sure about the quality of the picture. Let's just hope that's been sorted out and it doesn't cut out and it doesn't freeze. A couple of times it did that, so let's hope that's all sorted out and we can enjoy a game of football with fans. Where have all the fans, fans come from? Season ticket holders, if you were lucky enough to get a ticket, let us know, maladontakethelion.com. We'd love to hear from you. If you're a referee who has decided to pack in the game, we want to hear from you. If you're a referee who wants as much money as he possibly can towards Christmas, if the grassroots football is back on, still on, we still want to hear from you. How's your games been going? Let us know. Give us a nod. Let us know if you're enjoying it or is it getting a little bit, hmm, I'm doing too much now. I'm not too sure where I'll cut back. What's it been like? Kids, what's it been like for you playing the football? Managers, coaches, what's it like to be back? Let's hear from the grassroots family, please. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love your stories about the first weekend back again after lockdown. We've got another day to go, which is Sunday. We'll have more feedback on grassroots football. We'll talk to one or two parents, one or two managers and referees as well. The interviews will start next week, so please keep on top of your game. Keep enjoying it. Keep safe. Keep social distancing. Keep wearing your mask. Keep sanitising. What more could we ask for? It's so easy to do and it's so easy to get involved in grassroots football. Thank you very much indeed for all the feedback off you. Keep it coming in. 
we love to hear and thank you very much for our new subscribers on DXTL TV from the Touchland. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in to tonight's show. We'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7. From myself, Madeleine, all the team here at the Grassroots Show, don't cross the line and respect programme. Have a great evening. Stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow at 7. Good night. God bless.